product page, things like that. So now that you have your site developed and you've got all the pages that you want, the next thing you want to do is add the online store to the site. And you do that using the app section of the website. So you want to go into the site and edit mode and then where it says apps on the left, add apps, just click on that and it'll take you to the Wix app market. And you want to, you can either search through apps and you want to look for the Wix e-commerce app or you can go down to the sell online just down here and you will see the option for Wix stores which is free to install and you just want to click on that and then it'll start installing all of the pages and the section on the dashboard as well Let's just click add to site and you can see now everything's loading so it's adding the Wix stores And once everything's all done, you'll be automatically redirected to the new shop page. And you'll see all the options come up here. So you've got your sort of almost like a guide here. So start selling, adding products, defining shipping regions and payment methods, things like that. Um, if you come back into the shop page, so you can see you've got your general kind of uh, shop grid. So when you uh, up first upload the online store, you'll get some placeholder products. Um, they'll have like some basic information, product name, cost, um, product image, things like that. It's just so you can see how everything is going to be laid out. To just set up your uh, shop page, um, what you want to do is maybe add something like a title and maybe a small description as well. So if we increase some spacing over here and then bring the shop grid down a little. We've got space at the top now for a title and maybe some content as well. So if we go into the add elements section and click add heading one and then drag the heading one to the top. And again, just increase the sizing and the padding um, and the section heights to however wide or however tall that you need it, just so everything fits nicely on the page. And for the shop, you can just, for the title, you can just call it shop or shop our products. Just something to let customers know this is your main shop page and where they can browse all your products, things like that. And we'll add a bit more space to add some text. So you want to go into add elements, te uh, text, and then go into paragraphs and just pick from the three paragraph styles that you have. And then just add the paragraph here. And you just want to add a quick paragraph, not only and then just edit the page as you um, need. So I'm just going to bring this grid up um, again. So now that we have the page set up, um, one more thing we can do is also just manage the actual grid. So if we click on the grid section here, we've got the grid toolbar. And if you click into settings, you can see you've got options to show a specific collection. And collections are basically categories. Um, Wix called them collections, but they're essentially a way for you to organize your products. If you want to organize products by product type, if it's um, an accessory, if it's clothing, if it's a food item, you can create different collections and then assign each product those collections and that way you can organize your sh pages and your products into those categories. So for example, this is a general shop page, but then you can have another page dedica dedicated to a specific collection. So if you had a collection for food items, then you can have a shop page for food items and it would only show um, products that are assigned to that category. So if we had another category for food items, we would select that. Then within layout, you can sort of, you've got different options for layout width. So you can stretch to full width to take up the full width of the screen. Um, display style, you've got some options on how to, how you want to display this, the, the grid as well. Um, and then product info alignment. So this information here, it's sort of left aligned, but you can also choose to center align or right align it, or right align it. And you can choose the amount of columns and rows that you want, the spacing between each of them, the image placement as well. So if you wanted to change the image placement so that everything's sort of side by side, or if you want it above the info, things like that. 
So you've got a good few uh, options in terms of how to style um, the grid category. And one thing you want to do then is also come into settings and show what's actually displayed. So by default, product name, product price, and the ribbon will always be displayed. Ribbon uh, meaning this little bit of text here. So which within each product, then you can uh, add a little ribbon, whether it's that's bestseller, new, sale, just to kind of uh, attract more attention on specific products. Um, and then you can also uh, choose to whether or not include a name and price divider as well, which is just that little line. But if you said you don't want to show the ribbon or if you don't want to show the product price as well, um, that's up to you. You can control all of that within here. And then you can choose if you want to view products, view more products through load more, or if you want to use um, uh, pagination or infinite scroll, things like that. Um, another thing that might be useful is for you to use something called filters. So filters um, will sort of uh, add themselves. So if you click on fill filter, show filters, then it'll basically by default add a price filter. So it'll people can use the price range to uh, filter products that are within a certain price range. And then another thing you can filter by is things like color or size. So as you add products, you can add things called variable products where one product may have different color options or they may have, may have different size options. So those options then become things that people can filter by. So um, we can show this once we add some options to the products but that's just another thing that you can do with a shop page. You can choose to show the filters, or if you just want people to scroll normally, then just uncheck that show filters box. You can also add sorting. So by default, it's checked off, but if you uh, switch it on, you can just, uh, allow sort of like a sorting box over here, which kind of adds itself on the right-hand side. And you can allow customers to sort by whether it's a new product or not, um, price, sorting or alpha or sort by alphabetical order so um, you can give those options to your customers as well and last few things you can do is just a design so you can change the um in general like the background color of the shop grid um the product color product name color product font co font color um you can change all of that as well um and you can change the name of the text as well so with the button text it says load more but you can say you can change it to say view more products and the out of stock text by default will say out of stock but if you want to say um uh, in stock soon something like that you can change the text as well so it's up to you how you want to style it and what options you want to show the user um a good uh, what would be good would be to keep the filter and the sort by just so that just you want to you want to make the experience easy as possible for the customer so adding those sort of filter options and sort by options as well will um, help sort of them navigate around your site so as well as the shop page what also gets added is something called the product page and this is essentially the um, single product template that every single one of your products will show so when someone clicks on a from the shop page when they click on a product, this is essentially what they'll see. So they'll see the product image, they'll see the product name, the SKU number if it has one, the price and the two color options or whatever color options that they have. If they have even more options, for, exa for example, size, they'll have that um, and they'll be able to show sort of like the product information, refund, re return policy, things like that. So this is just a general, this is almost like a template basically. So if you come into pages and then go into under store pages, click product page. This is a general sort of template of what every single part of page will look like once you add all of the content. And you have some options for styling. So if you click into the grid, so to this giant uh, template page here, you just want to click on settings. And you'll see the options that you have to change the product page. So if you go into main and then click customize, customize page, you can select the page layout, things like, so this is the classic layout. If you want to look at the sleek layout and see if that works better, um, they also have something called stunning, which is a bit more um, image heavy. It's got the text within the image, things like that. Um, we can keep it spotlight or simple. There's five different layouts basically for you to choose which one you think would work best for your products. And you would just select one of them and all of your products will follow that layout. It's essentially the template page that you have. And then you also have the option to stretch to full width. So right now this is within the container, but you can also stretch, stretch it to full width. Um, if you realize there's a lot of information to put on the page, it, this might help not make it look so squished. 
And then you can also uh, choose where to th show the thumbnail. So this is referring to these images here at the bottom. So you can add more than one image to each product and you can decide sort of where to put those thumbnails, um, whether it's at the bottom, to the side, as dots, things like that. And within the settings, so you can choose what's displayed. So if you don't add SKU numbers to the page or to any of your products, you just want to uncheck that and that will hide the SKU number from the product template. And things like quantity, if you don't want people to have the option to choose more than one of the product, then you can hide that as well. Um, and the information sections, which is referring to this section here, so the product info, re return and refund policy, shipping info, um, it's up to you if you want to keep those um, in place as well. And with the add to cart button, so there's different options of what happens when someone clicks add to cart. They can either show a success pop-up, open a mini version of their cart, or go directly to the cart page or stay on the product page. Um, as a good rule of thumb, it's good to just open a mini cart. That's way, that way, if it'll show up so almost like they're that the the product's been successfully added, but they can still they're still on the page and they can add more products um, if they want to. And then with the text, so you have the option to change the button text for add to cart. So you either call it add to cart or you can call it add to basket if you prefer. Um, and then you've got the design as well. So with the design, you can pick sort of like the opacity and background color of the actual grid. You can also pick the design of the actual product details in terms of the name, product price, uh, options, things like that. And then the buttons as well, you can decide how you want to customize that. If you even want to customize the style um, or the border, things like that. Um, so there's also options you can do in terms of the design of the actual page and what layouts you want to use. Um, you are restricted to using Wix's own layout, um, but you've got a you've got five of different layouts to choose from, and you can also choose the text color, font sizing, things like that. Um, so it is pretty flexible in that way. And then once you're done, obviously just click save or publish um, to make your site live. And that's essentially your product page and your um, shop page set up. The other pages that you'll also get um, is something called the cart page. So this is a default page. Once people start adding things to their cart, they'll be able to see the list of all the things that are in their cart and they can review and remove things if they need to or um, add more things if they want to. And then they also have the thank you page. So this is right after they've successfully completed their um, purchase. They'll be given sort of like an order number and they'll be giving a sort of a overall of what they've bought, how much they've paid, um, any shipping address, billing address, things like that, um, an overview. And you'll also get um, a confirmation as well when someone's successfully purchased a product or products, um, you'll, be, you'll be given an order number and obviously all of their details of what they bought, um, where it's going, things like that. So that's all the pages and once you're happy with everything, you would just click save and then publish live when you're ready. Um, in the next few videos, we'll go over sort of adding products. You can add both physical and digital products if you wanted to sell maybe books or some PDFs, things like that. Um, and then you'll, you've also got quite a few options in terms of shipping and delivery or if you wanted to set up a click and collect store. Um, and then we'll also go over how to set up collections and collection pages, things like that.